how can I say that I can do something and then go out and do it? To the people that are watching in your life right now, think about this. There's something that you want to do. There is something that you have told yourself, man, two years ago I should have started. Yeah, yesterday I should have started. And tomorrow I'm going to start. But you're afraid. You're doubting yourself every minute you get. You have the ability to do it. Just say you can. Understand that there are people in your lives that are waiting on you to flourish. Waiting on you to accomplish. Waiting on you to go to the next level. Waiting on you to, 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 to achieve all of your dreams, to succeed in a way that you have imagined yourself achieving for so long. Understand that and then tell yourself that you can do it. Tell yourself that you can do it. What's up everyone, welcome back. Public speaking is one of the most important things you can develop in your life. Having the ability to go in front of people and spread your message effectively is a powerful thing that I think everyone should develop. But it's not easy. Getting in front of people is intimidating, it's scary. And I, I experience that all the time. So I figured, since this is such an important skill, that I should bring an expert on. And that person is Jabari Hall. Now Jabari Hall does this for a living. He's a motivational speaker. And if you know him, if you watch any of his work, then you'll see how, how powerful he is. You'll see how much passion he puts behind his voice. So in this episode, he's gonna share things with us, such as the importance of crafting a message before you get on stage. That's the most important part, because you have to understand what you're going to talk about how to deal with the nerves, how to handle hecklers, all these different things that you're going to experience when you're trying to become a public speaker or just get a lot more comfortable speaking in front of people. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Sit down, you know, relax and take all this information in. Make sure you go over to my YouTube and subscribe. Go over to iTunes, leave me a review. Make sure you subscribe and head on over to my Instagram and follow me there on John Arias 1, J-O-N-A-R-I-A-S 1. Let's get this thing started. And without further ado, Jabari, why don't you introduce yourself, man? Yes. Well, first off, thank you for having me on the show. I really appreciate this. I really appreciate you allowing me to uh, spend some time here. Again, like Jonathan said, uh, I am Jabari Hall. I am a, a motivational speaker, a public speaker. Um, uh, and I'm serving a purpose uh, uh, that the, the man above has has uh, given me, so to speak. And I really try to empower people wherever I go. I do that in mainly two different streams. One stream uh, being on the organizations or, or company side where I empower employees to care about their job or understand um, how to... Uh, exhibit principles of leadership, proper principles of leadership to really affect the organization. And then the other stream, I attack um, the problems that are within our that our that our youth are facing. Um, so I have eight different workshops where I work with them, and I also work with the parents of the youth uh, with a dad workshop, and then I also work with the leaders of the school, helping them to understand that they have to empower their students and how do they effectively do that. So I do I travel around to different cities. And I do that every day. It's what I love to do. So, Good, man. Thank you for the introduction. So I want to focus on technical skills that people can get yeah. from putting on the speeches that you put on. Okay. If I give a speech, yeah. there's so much that goes into it. Like, how do you prepare the content? How do I not get nervous on, on stage? So let's, let's focus on how you create the message that you're going to speak about. How do you, you know, how do you give a speech? It really depends on the audience, right? If I'm, say, for example, I'm speaking to you or you're a leader of a school yeah. and you have... A, a, a certain demographic of students, a certain students that meet a, a specific demographic. Um, I'm going to research uh, what problems they're facing mm -hmm. and what message do I want them to receive. Yeah. And I'm also going to couple it with what you want out of that. What goals do you want for your students? Yeah. And I'm going to put the speech together. Uh, and then I'm also going to practice with uh, other people that kind of meet that demographic to see the effect on them. So I see that effect. I have the speech written and then I just start practicing every day for that. Uh, so, yeah, let's talk about practice. Let's yeah. talk about practice because that's one big reason why I started this because I want to figure out how 
exceptional people practice because I think practice is what makes people better, obviously. But yes. Do you okay, so once you have your message, how do you how do you how do you practice it? Do you speak in front of a mirror? Do you like talk to yourself? Like give me the nitty gritty. How do you how exactly do you practice? You touched on something which is uh, uh, exceptional practice. Something that I've probably you know, how, haven't how, heard before. How exceptional people practice. Right. Yeah. But but I, I if you were saying exceptional people, that's great. But I just looked at it as uh, exceptional practice. Okay. So, how do I practice exceptionally, right? Yeah. Um, to obtain exceptional results. Um, literally, it is a. Initially, it is a trusting in the process. Uh, what does that mean, right? Everyone says trusting in the process. Yeah, well, it's 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 trusting in the minute, the little. The the uh, sometimes less attentive attention grabbing um, activities, mm -hmm. but paying attention to those things and mastering those things. So what do I mean by that? It's when I am prepared for a speech, I'm waking up in the morning and I'm setting set, setting time aside to uh, speak in the mirror uh, uh, and practice my speech. Mm -hmm. When I'm brushing my teeth, I'm thinking about how I'm going to be walking on that stage. Um, mm -hmm. And delivering a point to say, okay, you know, when I say, and you, you know, I'm, I'm practicing that while I'm brushing my teeth, and, and you, you know, <laughs> I can um, see you doing that. <laughs> uh, so I'm practicing the mirror for the oration of mm -hmm. the speech. Um, and then also, as I'm doing some kind of activity, I'm still walking and, 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 and putting myself mentally there uh, on stage at the moment I'm going to be giving that speech. Uh, other things that I do, I, I frankly, rewrite the speech a few times and that's because mm -hmm. in the past just like i'm doing right now when i yeah. write things down I, I tend to remember it better yeah so if i continually write it down mm -hmm. i can also continually um update or or make the speech a little better as i see some grammatical issues or just um putting content the content together and having it aligned properly so i rewrite things a lot so to sum all that up it's wake up in the morning and reciting the speech in the mirror looking at myself seeing how how i'm going to uh, pronounce it and and um and uh, say things uh also i'm practicing my my presence on stage mm -hmm. while i'm doing some activities yeah and then the third thing is i rewrite a lot so that i could have that embedded in my subconscious there's a lot of other things but i'll stop there and say those are three things that i do no that's perfect you mentioned something about writing a lot yeah how does writing help you exactly Writing allows me to see the the breakdown of the content, see the flow of the content, mm -hmm. um, because sometimes I'm, I could assume that if I say something, okay, this sounds great, and then I go say part B and part C, but then when I write it down and I just read it, mm -hmm. um, part B and C don't really match or don't really flow. So maybe I need to switch D into C and C into D. So you get to visualize it. Yeah, I get to visualize paper. it just a little bit differently. And then again, like I alluded to before, it's it's it allows me to uh, memorize uh, the words every time I do write. Okay, so let's let's get specific right now. I want to talk about the speech you gave on a subway one day. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. for everyone who doesn't know, you'll see in the show notes when Jabari made a speech on a train, on an MTA train, a regular subway train. And this was kind of crazy because mm -hmm. we, we got on a train like on a Thursday morning or something like that. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> we got on a train on a Thursday morning and then you just put on a speech and I was recording you. Yeah. I noticed so many things while you were doing that. First, how you delivered the message, but then how you were able to just flood out mm -hmm. all the negativity that you were receiving on that train. Yeah. Because you have to understand, like you, you were on a picture yourself riding on the train and then a dude jumps on the train and then starts giving a speech but there's more to that you want you want to tell everyone what you how, more about the the speech you made yeah you know i take a step back and i say and, and us thinking about the message that we wanted to portray in this short that jonathan said you'll see in the notes there we 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 we, we highlighted and we and we we came to a conclusion that speaking about homeless people and their bravery their level of like not quitting on bouncing back in life yeah. right we wanted to highlight that because those are people that we take for granted uh, we take for granted their resilience in trying to uh, just eat just get something to eat just get, yeah. get something to drink get mm -hmm. some new some new shoes just get something and their belief in that they can and their trust in people so it was great that we were able to 
bring that to light uh, on this subway series here. Uh, it was an interesting <laughs> experience because it was it was it's really interesting because I mean, from sitting there and asking for for money or food and having no one, no one. You know, you stop. Yeah. yeah, it was kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. I, I really felt because it was like half of me was like I'm still Jabari, yeah. but half of me was like I'm this homeless guy. You were in the mode. I was in the mode, right? Yeah. And I remember sitting there like, wow, you're not really, you're really not gonna give me money. Yeah, no one give you nothing. You're just gonna pass by. Really? I also think people find it kind of weird because they saw me on the opposite side holding a camera. Yeah. So they saw, they saw, they saw that something was going on. But yeah. Ultimately, they didn't give you no money. Still, you know, yeah. Even if it's like, for example, oh, this is being recorded. Let me just put some money in. Maybe I'll hey, maybe some money. Good. <laughs> you know, not yeah. even that. It was just like I'm on my way. Yeah. Um. So that was really interesting. But then also, what you asked about was how did I negate the kind of negativity? It was a tough was speech. On. Yeah, and we did it quite a few times, right? <laughs> did it three times. Yeah. I and and I know which part you're referring to is the third part, the third one, where we get on there and I'm about to speak, and this guy is just screaming, "Hey, hey, 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 hey!" hey. You know, sh- shut up, something like that. <laughs> you know, and I just look at him like, bro. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> okay, I, I, I have to stay focused on on our goal here. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, almost in everything that I do, I set a goal. Okay? We set a goal mm-hmm. in accomplishing this. And, and what was our mission? Is? So quickly, I had to go back to, why am I here? For a goal. Okay, I'll deal with this guy later. Smile at him and keep going. And um, in the moment, you know, was things are moving so fast, you know, you know, we only had about seven or eight minutes to do things. I just had to keep that goal in mind. And then on top of that, I try to exude positivity. I preach to people or I try to empower people to think a, a different way, to think about have their thoughts be positive thoughts rather than negative thoughts. So if I'm showing people or teaching them or coaching them on how to think that way i myself have to live and breathe it yeah. so in that situation i had to really live and breathe it and it turned out to be successful so. it was it was a good it was a great experience the reason why i asked that question is because if anyone gives a speech you know how nervous you get right yeah. beforehand you you have yeah. all these nerves wrecking and sometimes that stops you from making speeches sometimes that stops you from actually volunteering to give a speech yeah. so you may have answered it but I really want to make sure I, I get this down for okay. the listeners but absolutely how do you deal with the nerves how do you deal with the nerves like do they go away or do yeah. you just deal with them nervousness yeah. how do I look past it I consider myself a different breed and the type of the, the type of conversations that I have with people is is to try to help them to see how they can be a different breed as well what do I mean that a different breed I get nervous like everyone else, I get nervous when I get on stage. Yeah, I'm ready for, to perform anything. If I'm just speaking here, I may be a little bit nervous, right? I'm on mm-hmm. camera. Oh my god! Yeah, these lights the actually lights. make me a little nervous. <laughs> right. Yeah, the lights make me a little nervous. But anyway, right. But what happens is, I'm like, in order for me to succeed at this, I gotta dominate this. <laughs> so as soon as I feel it, I'm just like, ah, yeah, I'm ready, baby. <laughs> You know, I just scream out. So there's some animal in me that's like, it comes and it takes over. Yeah. Right? So when I get on stage, literally, I'm going to announce this to the world, I guess. Before I get on stage, there's two things that occur. Mm-hmm. Uh, one is I have to use the bathroom every time. <laughs> every time. Just number one. Just number one. Every time. And then the second thing is, when, I, when I'm done, I wash the hands. I'm, I, I'm a germaphobe. I'm in that mirror, and I'm talking to myself for about 30 seconds. I'm like, hmm. oh, yeah, you got this. You got this. Ooh, you got this. You got this. <laughs> I even do a little Ray dance. Ray, uh, Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis dance. And then I'm like, you know, I'm ready. I'm yeah. ready, right? So yeah. by the time I walk out of there, they're getting the focus Jabari. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think that's how I I um eradicate that that that, that nervousness. Yeah. I attack it. I bring out this inner beast that has to be there in order for me to be successful. Mm-hmm. And when that comes out, I'm unstoppable. You certainly are, because that's a tough speech to do. I mean, imagine yourself going onto a subway with complete strangers and then putting that speech on. I was holding the camera. I had nothing to do with it. Yeah. And I, I felt just as nervous because I felt like people were looking at me. Yeah. When, when in the actuality, like you were the focus of everything. Right. Because, you know, before I give a speech, and I don't give half as much as you do, but the nerves, like, to me, what I notice is that my heart rate like goes to the roof. Yeah. I find it hard to speak. Yeah. And then it just, you can just tell that I'm nervous. 
And it just seems to me like the best way to get over it is to like keep your goals in mind. Because the nerves, they don't go away. Mm-hmm. Keep your goals in mind. Yeah. So now let me ask you on, let me ask you this. You've been, in the past year, you put on, how many speeches have you done in the past year? Close to 90. Close to 90. Yeah. Okay, that's a lot of speeches. Yeah. <laughs> how do you maintain your energy? Because you, I, you travel a lot. You go to Dallas, you go to... Um, Chicago, Chicago, Virginia, Virginia. Yeah. you've been to a lot of places. So how do you how do you maintain your energy? That's a good question. Well, I have my my month calendar. I plan it out, and I know when there are down times and when I have to be busy. Mm-hmm. So when I have to be busy, I load myself up with some nutrients. I have a lot of tea, um, a lot of ginger tea specifically, a lot of halls. Uh, pun intended uh-huh. and a lot of um, emergencies and something like that so and then I have a lot of fruits so I, right before I'm going on a week long kind of stint uh, I'm loading myself up to provide the energy because I know when I'm done at that end of on, on that Friday or Saturday mm-hmm. or something like that I'm going to take 24 hours to recharge yeah so like I just said you know I have let's say for, for example I I'm in Dallas for a week when I fly back to New York and I'm here for that Sunday, I may go to church. I'll try to make it to church. Thank you. <laughs> um, but after that, I'm laying down. I'm resting because I know that the Tuesday I got to fly out again. So long answer to long answer to your question. But I just I just map out when I got to go, mm-hmm. when I got to rest, and what the, what are the things I need to do when I got to go? Because when I got to go, I got to go and I got to make this work. So I charge myself up, make sure I'm good. And then I have adequate rest, a day rest, and my mind is just back to it anyway. Yeah, so I, I got to keep going. Yeah, rest is tremendously important. So you're very organized, obviously. You organize your rest, you organize yeah. your speeches. So yeah. I think that's that's what a lot of people get from this. Is organization is the key. It is the key. Actually, Nova said the same thing okay. when he makes when he makes tracks, when he makes beats. He yeah. like organizes his beats pretty well. Now, what are the biggest mistakes you see someone make who's trying to have the career that you have? Okay, one is not trusting the process. What does that mean? Not trusting that you need to do the little things. If you just skip out on uh, not memorizing that speech one more time, you just skip out on not um, practicing. When do I go loud? When mm-hmm. do I come down? Yeah. Right. Well, if you don't, if you if you don't um, research your audience, if you don't, one thing that I've learned is is you got to know where you're going. You got to know. You got to map it out. If you don't map it out, uh, uh, things can happen. You might get lost. You want to find alternative routes. So just trusting this process, trusting and paying attention to the little things um, that you know yeah. is going to make you better, but it's like, oh, that's too tedious. I don't want to do it. People make mistakes in that. Yeah. So so to guard against that, uh, to make up for that or solution for that is, 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 is really putting it into perspective that every little thing that I do it's going to matter later on because it will. So the mistake is not trusting the process. I think a second mistake is limiting the um, exposure, limiting the exposure. And it's what do I mean by that. It's uh, it's saying that, well, you know, I'm a speaker and let's say, for example, I'm speaking to only students. That's my focus. And then someone comes up to me and they say, hey, I want you to be on this show. It's like, well, you know, I'm not ready for a show. I'm ready. I'm only going to speak to students. You know, they, it's in my comfort zone. I'm not comfortable with that. Hmm. You're limiting your exposure already. You're limiting your ability to uh, uh, be exposed to the world, be exposed to something new, mm-hmm. uh, learn something new. Uh, and, and then you kind of stay in this bubble where you think you're safe. So um, don't limit your exposure is what I would say to, to as a solution for uh, that mistake that people make which mm-hmm. is limited exposure just try something new try it just do it just do it if you fail it's fine you learn from failure and a third thing I would say is a mistake uh, is having your and I have to phrase this properly social problems be kind of like these professional disasters mm-hmm. right? these social issues be professional disasters what do I mean by that yeah social, your, your social disasters are your professional disasters well yeah. social social issues right become yes. professional disasters okay what do you mean by that right? mm-hmm. so for example if I know that I've been late a few times yeah you know that CPT stuff <laughs> I've been late a few that's times that's CP time yeah right yeah <laughs> I've been late a few times in a social sense and I'm like oh it's fine oh I'll, 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 I'll arrive late mm-hmm. you know 
I gotta make an entrance. Yeah. And you're used to that in a social setting. And people have said, hey, Jabari, don't, don't be late, man. And you're like, ah, all right, no problem. I'll show to the party on town next time. Yeah. That social issue becomes a professional disaster because if you're late in that social sense, when you're late as a professional, you can miss out an opportunity. People will see that you're coming in late, so they may limit the recommendations they have for other people to, uh, for you to, towards other people. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and then it, it just doesn't show good for your brand. Mm-hmm. So that's what I said. Most, not most, but the, 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 the critical mistakes, two I mentioned. And then this third one is where people have their social issues or social problems become professional disasters. So to circumvent that, it's, you know, find out what your social problems are, so to speak. What, what do you do maybe internally or with friends that people have told you that's a problem mm-hmm. um, so, uh, and fix it there so mm-hmm. that it doesn't affect you and become a professional disaster. I like how you put that because the lateness example is a great one because everyone runs late, but some people are like habitually, habitually, I forgot to speak, Yes, are really late all the time. Yeah. And if you're used to just like showing up whenever you want, yeah. that's going to like, it's a habit at the end of the day. Yeah. If you if you have the habit of showing up late, it's going to like show up. And I've been late to a lot of important things yes. and it's embarrassing. Like you don't want to be late to things. No. I really hate running late. And it's one of those things where like you tell yourself, oh, I'm going to leave 10 minutes later. Why don't you just leave an hour later? Yes. Like plan ahead yeah. because there's so much stress. Like if you want to train and then it stops, you start to blame every everybody. Like if the train stops, you get mad at the operator. You get when it's nobody's fault. It's your fault that you should have left. Literally. Early. Yeah. And when I put that, that happened to me so much times where I'm at the mercy of MTA. Mm-hmm. And I, and I like to think of MTA as like a woman that I've dated before, and we <laughs> we've had some good times and some bad times, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm on MTA and you know this train will stop in the middle of two two stations and I've trained myself to just be like it's my fault I should have planned accordingly you take responsibility and that's it and then it, it cal- I, I calm down I'm like next time I know it's your fault you play on I, you I, I adjust for next time I just want to say something I know we're going to get to this mm-hmm. um, uh, about mastery and mastering your craft I think there are some keys to it one of the keys is um developing healthy habits most people look at habits and look at it as a bad habit you have a habit of smoking you have a habit of of, of being late you have a habit of of cursing too much you have a habit of looking down when you speak you know when you want to master something you have to develop this kind of diligence you have to develop this kind of uh, disgusting like, ridiculous habit right yeah. right to 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 trust in the process and also to do the small things mm-hmm. so Let's say, for example, for me, right? I'm, I'm the speaker, right? Uh, I have a habit. Or I, I, try, I make this habit, or, I, or I, I focused on creating this habit of speaking a certain way. And most people will say, man, you know, you got to turn it off. We're in a social sense. And it's just like, well, no, I'm not going to turn it off for you because I got to be ready for when I'm on stage. Yeah. And I can't just practice when I'm on stage. I got to use all these opportunities to practice. Yeah. So when I'm in a social sense, social setting, when I'm in a private setting in my room, uh, when I'm in the hallway, when, I, when I'm in the basement, wherever, I'm talking a certain way. I'm projecting a certain way. I'm building a habit to speak like that by constantly speaking like that in different settings. Got you. Right? And by the, so that now, by the time I get on stage, it becomes easy. It becomes natural. It yeah. becomes natural. Yeah. And I've mastered it now, right? So Because what you do is... What you do is is interesting because you speak, and you, you speak all the time. We speak all the time, but there are like small nuances that that I noticed that you've mastered. Yeah. Like before you give a speech, for example, I think you pronounce certain words. Yes. Tell me about that. Yeah. So I pick particular words to pronounce or say with a different octaves. And I remember I I told myself the first few words that come out of your mouth, you know, that's what's going to kind of dictate the pace. Mm-hmm. Would dictate the response of the audience. Um, so if I started by saying, hello, you know, my name is Jabari. How you doing? <laughs> I say, hello, my name is Jabari. I'm sorry, I apologize if you, you broke know. ears just now. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but but those two levels yeah. make tremendous difference because now you're just like, whoa, he's energized. Or, mm-hmm. or he's a soft speaker. So I'm practicing those words and saying, hello, 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 hello. Hello, 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 hello. 
You're using your voice as an instrument. Yes. Well, it is an instrument. It's it is an instrument. an instrument. I have. It is. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I like how you put that. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm, I'm practicing these words, and I practice it right before, so that I also know what level to come in at based on my audience. If I'm speaking to, you know, some some 14 year olds or 12 year olds, mm-hmm. I'm going to pronounce things a little bit differently. I'm going to speak a little bit differently, and that practice beforehand allows me to find that right. Like mm-hmm. right octave, that right level. Uh, if I'm speaking to a group of executives, then I may not say, "You guys, you guys know what you're doing. You're doing, it, you're doing it wrong." And well, you know, if I'm speaking to 14 year olds and I'm just like trying to scold them a little mm-hmm. bit, let them kind of understand that they need to um, change their lives. I'm not going to talk to the group of exec- executives like that. Yeah, I'm you- say, "Well, you guys are doing a little bit wrong," and here's here's how we think about how we can do it the right way. You know, uh, so yeah, I do want to mention something. When we made that speech last year at Penn State, yeah, man, the biggest lessons I learned yeah. were, for example, Jabari and I produced this whole speech. We yeah. did the marketing. We like yeah. made the videos. We traveled all the way out to Penn State. Yeah, We plugged it. Everyone said, we're going to come. And then we did the speech. And you know how many people showed up? Like two people. <laughs> <laughs> two people showed up. Like two people showed up. Well, okay. well, my mom was there and my little brother and my aunt. <laughs> but not including them. We had, it was like, anyway, we had th- these big expectations for yeah. this speech. That whole afternoon, we were in the hub. We were, we were like rolling up to people, like giving out mixtapes, like yeah. you need to come to our thing. Yeah. And then nobody came. And when I when I learned from that was, although a lot of people didn't come out, I feel like we grew tremendously after that. Absolutely, we knew how to take a production from beginning to end. Yes, the marketing, the 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 everything, mm-hmm. and that was important. But then, when I got there, I remember you and I were frustrated for a moment. And me personally, when I got there, I said, "How is it that?" We came all the way. We drove four hours to Penn State, and then none of y'all appreciate what we do. None of y'all come out, right? Yeah. That was my initial reaction. Yeah. But then afterwards, I thought to myself, you know what? If we were like a big time celebrity, like Kevin Hart, people would have came out. Yeah. Because he's put the work in. He's hot. Yeah. We're just not that hot yet. Yeah. That's what I told myself at the end of the day. Absolutely. Instead of being mad at all the students for not coming to my show to our show. We need to, I'm not mad at us, but we need to improve our game. We're just not that good yet. And a lot of times, people expect to be good the first time. Like when I release this video, I expect to get about 100 views. To tell you the truth, I'm not even lying. But then once I produce the 300 video, then that's going to start going up. And that's just a matter of patience, just just being able to just stay in the game for years and years and years on end. And I just wanted to mention that because I feel like after that day, I took the most responsibility in everything that I do. Okay. If y'all don't show up, it's because I'm not good enough yet. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. Shout out to Penn Staters. Uh, yeah, I didn't mean to say that channel on Grateful. Uh, <laughs> at the moment, I thought y'all were, but yeah. That, like I said, it was we had to be harder. We appreciate y'all because we came out there and like right. we had the venue to do it. So yeah, yeah it, it was still a, an amazing opportunity and it, it was great and it was one or two people. Uh, I won't say the number. But it's a lot more. It's like people. five. <laughs> no, like thirty something <laughs> no, no, people. No. <laughs> at least. Where you see thirty? Okay, my bad. They were in and out. <laughs> in and out um, but it, it worked out well. well what I wanted to talk about with Penn State really quickly was that we forced ourselves to prepare beyond prepare so to speak we prepared hard like 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 we were up days and nights practicing doing our trip there we stopped off and we practiced right we 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 we, we did a lot to, to, and learned a lot that time and I just want to say to people no matter what the outcome of uh, of your of what you expected uh, if you if your expectations weren't met uh, Analyze what you learned throughout the process, and that's going to be far more valuable than what you think you've lost. So that's one of the top about for that because uh, very valuable and, and, a, and a catalyst uh, for me. Since you began your professional career, what would you do differently? Quite honestly, I wouldn't have done anything different. Good, that's the perfect answer. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah. quite honest, I, I, I wouldn't have done anything differently. For so many reasons, it's it's. I'll start with this, and I'll go to another one. There's a there's another speaker, very very popular man, um, really good at what he's doing, he's about? and he's done it for about eight years now. His name is Inky Johnson. So anybody watching, look up Inky Johnson. Fantastic um, speaker and orator. Uh, I was listening to one of his videos one time, and uh, he talks about his story and how he was a football player about to make it to the league, and then tragedy struck so to speak and he lost movement in his arms and parts of his body and he turned that um, story into his you know his life now where he's speaking and, and letting people know how they can triumph over things one of his main points in the video was uh, 
he he represented something and because things happened he owed people things he was just like i know i promised that i was going to make it to the league but ne- but now i i owe i i still owe you that but i owe you more i know what i represent i i i, I represent the symbol mm-hmm. of something but that came be- that that grew that representation of himself that understanding of that of how, what he represents grew because of his experiences had that experience not happened and had he gone to the league he would have lived a different, different life he would have thought he represented something different uh, and he may not have been this really inspirational person that he is today what i mean by all that when i when i saw that i'm like you're absolutely right whatever happens uh, it's happening for a reason and it's, it was kind of just it was kind of just uh, reiterating what i was already thinking but i'm like yeah i needed that everything is going to happen for a reason and that's one of the reasons why i would not do anything different i would not want to go back and do anything different because today i know what i represent i know i know because of what i've gone through i know because of who i want to impact and empower uh, i know because of 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 my story and what I had to overcome, whether internally or externally, or uh, a, familiar, a, a family sense, or professionally, mm-hmm. any kind of um, a forum or area, I know what I had to overcome, and I know I did it, so I can I can let people know that they can do it too. Mm-hmm. I'm just a man, just like you are, or just like you're a woman, and you can do it too. So I, I really wouldn't I really wouldn't um, go back and redo anything. I mm-hmm. wouldn't change anything because on top of that, I like me. Yeah. And I like me. I hope I everyone like me likes today. themselves too. <laughs> yeah. I love yeah. me. And I just like, I love me. Mm-hmm. Maybe if I did something different, I could have been president right now. Right? And it's different. President. Yeah. Yeah. But I love me now. So I, I, I wouldn't change a, a thing. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I want to get back on the technical side of things. Um, Before you get to the technical, the only thing I probably would change okay. is I would try to have hair. I probably would try to <laughs> I'm probably trying to have hair because you know about seven years ago this went this went away and uh, I just try to I've been trying to fight since so but I just come to a conclusion that it is what it is this is life so probably the only thing I would change and I would still keep the big forehead but I would just get some hair coming down you know that's probably what I would do yeah I just want to I thought yeah. you were going to say something like something like motivational I know <laughs> I'm just giving you honesty it's right insane. now you good man the, the baldy fits you well man. yeah the I baldy guess fits yeah. You. <laughs> hilarious man I'm hilarious. Here. Yeah. I actually don't even want to go back to the technical side it was too it was too, <laughs> it was too funny we'll talk about that another day yeah. <laughs> Let's, I want to briefly touch on the technical stuff how, how much do you focus on breathing because yeah if I lose track of my breathing at any moment I lose I just said that and I lost my breath and now yes. my heart rate is going through the roof and yeah. I feel like I can't even talk right now and I just got extremely tired right now. When I lose track of my breathing, it makes the speech a lot more difficult. But tell me about breathing. How, how can someone improve on that? Because I feel like that's the variable that makes speakers really good. It's yes. how you control your breathing. Yes. Uh, two things. One is uh, I meditate and there's many forms of meditation, right? But, but when I meditate, I practice how thoughts go in my head and how I can like, I, I simulate myself or I see myself grabbing that thought mm-hmm. and, 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 and releasing it if it's negative, mm-hmm. bringing in positivity and I slowly do that. And while I'm doing that, I'm breathing a certain way. How exactly? And I'm, I'm, so if I'm breathing in, I see the thought. And as I, as I uh, do away with any negativity and as I, as I, um, force myself to think positive about it see the silver lining in it I'm breathing out mm-hmm. so it's so I'm, I'm, I'm becoming one of myself so that meditation mm-hmm. right um, helps me for when I need to pause mm-hmm. and, and, and and while I'm pausing I know what's happening I kind of have I'm in, I'm one with myself mm-hmm. and uh, and how I can continue speaking so meditation is one secondly that's why the writing is so key for me, and that's why I do it so much. Writing is tremendous. Because when I'm writing now, when I'm writing, um, um, I'm reciting it. And if I know that I have to reach a higher height in my voice, if I have to go l- real low and go Barry, Barry, you know, Barry on him, you know. Um, if real I low. have to go low, <laughs> I'm a fool. Yeah. If I have to go low or high, uh, uh, the writing helps me to know, okay, this is a breaking point. So in my speeches, I'm like, I, I put reminders, like a B, breathe. 
mm. uh, I, I go, you know, that kind of thing. So now when I'm reading it, I'm like, okay, breath. So how am I going to handle this paragraph before? And I'm going to speak a certain way and 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 and, and, and uh, finish with, yes, and come back and keep going this way because mm-hmm. I. I practice it when I'm writing and then I practice it for my meditation. So those are the two things. Perfect. No, I think um, breathing is extremely important. And you'll notice extremely. that like, I think with all these interviews, you'll notice how much everybody meditates. So far, everyone I've interviewed meditates. Wow, that's good. Yeah, so. That's I excellent. Think that's, excellent. I think that's one of the secrets if there are any. Yeah. Let's talk about hecklers. Not yeah. hecklers per se. I don't think you've had a heckler, but I remember when you gave a speech at a school up in Harlem. Yeah. That was like, a <laughs> there was this little baby who oh, like kept man. getting up <laughs> oh, so man. there was a little baby who kept getting up he, he, was, he wasn't a baby he was maybe a toddler two years toddler, old yeah. yeah he yeah. kept getting up running around and then at certain moments he would like just scream yeah how do you deal with those because I'm sure you weren't expecting that you were expecting no. to go from your speech from beginning to end but how if I, if I were to give you I mean I, I give you tons of credit but I love the way you handled that because yeah. at certain moments you kind of use his energy like when the kid screamed you notice that the crowd focused their attention to him yes. and then you just kind of went along with the crowd and you laughed and you kind of embraced the child yeah. so you, you went with the flow of the audience Yes. how do you deal with these variables that you can't predict or just let's talk about the child tell yeah. me run it through me how did you deal with that child when he kept screaming and, and interrupting your speech so I can't remember. Uh, good question. I can't remember the amount of times he sc- he screamed. It was about seven times. Yeah. And the reason why is because yeah. I edited your video. Yes. And, yeah. <laughs> it was very right? annoying. And um, I just knew it was more than once, more than twice. And seven I was just times. like, okay, he's he's going seven. to continue this. So the first time it happened, <laughs> was it seven? It was seven it was times. Seven. Okay. <laughs> and the first time it happened, I was like, crap, he's going to continue this. Is the mother going to take him out? I don't know. Second time it happened, I was like, okay, she's not. I'm going to have to go through this. Okay. And then it kind of progressed from there. It kind of got louder or just random noises at that point. It was just like really <laughs> random. So I just knew, I said, the next time it happens, I'm going to have to adjust to this. And um, I, was, I just remember when it happened, I kind of like turned to the, the top. And I'm like, wow. Yeah, yeah, he's excited too, isn't it? Yes, I'm excited as well. Mm-hmm. Right. To kind of just see that I highlight that. Right, but I'm continuing on, and hopefully the audience can can like see. Okay, he's he, that's gonna happen, but I'm gonna keep my focus on Jabari. Mm-hmm. Um, so I try to, you know, direct them while with performing this action and trying to do it really smoothly. Mm-hmm. The other time though, he got up and he ran behind me. Yeah, I remember, remember that. that. Yeah, I remember that. He like yeah, ran yeah. behind me as I was speaking, and I'm like, oh hey, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But but I looked at that as. I have to embrace what he's doing. If I get um, flustered or angry at such a momentous or, or a happy time for them, they were graduating, uh, uh, then their perception of me is going to change. Mm-hmm. And their um, uh, what, whatever they were thinking about themselves and the day may be affected. So I need to keep them in that space. So You control the crowd. I just needed him to use to, to, to I just used his energy that brought it back to the crowd because when he ran past I was like oh go ahead buddy yeah you know, he was going for somewhere alright let's see where he goes and he came back I'm like alright well we're going to continue on you know like we gave him his attention he got it let's come back you were um, like water well. you were like water you like you went around it you didn't you know yes. you filled the cup you yes I, I, I'm probably misquoting it but no but I I, I, I've, I distinctly remember this and this is uh this is uh, Bruce Lee. Mm-hmm. What yeah. is it? Bruce Lee talked about, um, uh, and I, I'm not going to emulate his, uh, or, or try to be like him or speak like him, but he he, he, he talked about- I don't even know how Bruce Lee you, speaks. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not, anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> he talked about being like water and understanding that how can you flow um, in any situation, and f- and move like how water moves. When when a rock comes in and 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 right in between water, it just goes around. Goes right? around, it just yeah. Goes around. It, ke- it keeps its flow because it's water. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it keeps what what it knows itself to be. Hmm. It doesn't let anything stop it. And if and if anything stops it, it's just like oh, there's a brick wall. Okay, well we need more water, more water. Mm-hmm. My wall, and we keep going. All right. So um, I really liked his analogy, and I may have been misquoting it a little bit myself but i think it's around that area yeah i'll make sure to like clear water. it up in the show notes yeah okay so jabari we're just about at that time right now but yeah. why don't you tell why don't you give everyone some fire right now so 
So your public, speak. your public speaker. So let them, let them know. So yeah. I'm, I'm putting batteries on your background. Now. I'm, put, I'm putting batteries just on your stop, background. I'm, put, I'm putting you on the spot. Give, let, show everyone why you're on the show right now. Wow, you, you, you definitely put me on the spot. I didn't even expect the question. <laughs> but one thing that um, you'll notice about yourself when you put the time in, you'll be ready at any point. Um, this is a story that I share with people a lot. Uh, a few stories, but one of them that is really powerful for me really inspires me to continue doing what I'm doing. And it's a story about these mountain climbers. Um, some, some were experienced, some were, some were new, right? never climbed before. And they set out to climb Mount Everest. And if you don't know, uh, Mount Everest is the tallest mountain in the world. It stands over 29,000 feet high. And to put some more perspective, all right, uh, the Empire State Building, uh, it stands only 1,400 feet high. 29,000 feet is where Mount Everest is. That's, that's where, uh, the, that's the cruising altitudes of airplanes. Yeah, you going to China? Yeah, they, they're cruising at 30,000 feet. These climbers set out to climb that. On the, the night before the last push to the top of the summit, uh, one of the experienced climbers asked this question. He asked the group, why are you climbing Mount Everest? The tallest mountain in, in the world. Why are you climbing it? They laughed. Right? I didn't take him seriously. So he asked the question again. He said, why are you climbing Mount Everest? Uh, a woman tried to answer this question. She climbed it a few times and she said, well, I climbed it six out of the seven times. So I got to make it seven, right? I got to make it to the top the seventh time. He said, that's not an answer. I asked you, why? Why are you climbing Mount Everest, the tallest mountain in the world? A first-time climber, never climbed before. He answered the question. He said, there are these elementary school kids that he visits back home. And they helped to sponsor his trip uh, to Mount Everest. And they gave him this flag to put at the top of the mountain. He said, if they could see a regular guy follow impossible dreams, then maybe they can do it too. He said, I'm climbing Mount Everest, the tallest mountain in the world. Because I can. He's climbing Mount Everest, the tallest mountain in the world, where there's an average of negative 36 degrees daily, hourly, by the minute. He's climbing this mountain because he can. The story is so um, powerful to me because again here's a man that 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 that's that's never done something before but going uh towards uh, the best uh, the greatest the highest and doing it because he said he said i can B because he recognizes that there's that there are little boys and girls that that would see him as a regular guy but follow impossible dreams and maybe they can aspire to do the same I look at myself and I say, how can I emulate that? How can I say that I can do something and then go out and do it? To the people that are watching, in your life right now, think about this. There's something that you want to do. There is something that you uh, uh, have told yourself, man, I, two years ago I should have started it. I, yeah, yesterday I should have started it. Man, tomorrow I'm going to start it. But you're afraid. You're doubting yourself every minute you get. Think about it. And then think about the, the guy in that story who's doing something because he said he can. You have the ability to do it. Just say you can. Understand that there are people in your lives that are waiting on you to flourish. 
waiting on you to accomplish, waiting on you to go to the next level, waiting on you to, 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 to achieve all of your dreams, to succeed in a way that you have imagined yourself achieving for so long. Understand that. And then tell yourself that you can do it. Tell yourself that you can do it. Because like the man before you, like the generation before you, like the century before you, like the thousands of years before you, men and men and women and dogs and, and everybody has done it. A dog has, has traveled miles without eating, hundreds and thousands of miles without eating, knowing that it's starving. Uh, 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 there, there are men that have marched hundreds of thousands of miles in, in, in search of peace. And there, there, are, there, are, there, are, there have been first presidents, first African-American presidents that, that before people have said it, that it cannot, that it cannot be done. People have done it because they say they can. So I ask of you, I challenge you. When somebody says that you cannot do it, when somebody doubts you, smile and say, watch me because you can do it and you will do it because if every day, every day, you look in that mirror and you tell yourself that you can do it and then you go out and execute on whatever it is that you're chasing, you're gonna make it happen. So I challenge you, I challenge you, I challenge you to do it. Cause I wanna see you on top, baby. I thank you. Slow clap. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for that time I appreciate, appreciate you man I hope everybody enjoyed today's conversation hope you gain lots of technical insight if you're man I can't even <laughs> I, can't, I can't back that up man I hope everybody enjoyed it I'll yeah. see y'all next time